Hi, it's Donna Drake with Live It Up, and we are at the Red Touch Media Studios, and with us is John Tesh. Welcome to the show. It's great to be a part of this show. You, you just opened up a show in the lobby. This is very cool. <laughs> it's like a pop-up show. Well, you know, uh, how much of those couch shows, the big Meredith Vieira shows, they're like $40 million or something like that? This is, this is fantastic. You should, take this, you should syndicate this show right now. There you go. I think we will. Yeah. Donna Drake does Red Touch show. Media. <laughs> it's kind of like Mickey Rooney. Let's put on a show, right? Yeah, that was the uh, I've got a barn, I've got a piano thing. Yeah. And you have a piano. And I have a barn, so we're ready to go. So tell us about your music first. Ah, well, gosh, I mean, I've been doing music since I was about six. We still, we're still out there doing 30, 35 shows uh, a year. We're doing a uh, big band now. So it's, I, I call it the Let's Go Out and Lose Some Money Tour, where we have uh, three buses, a semi, and 12 people on, on stage. And uh, it's, we, we take people back to the 30s and, and 40s. Uh, backstage, we were talking about where you grew up, and you said you spent some time in Long Island, which is where I live now. Yeah. And we were talking about uh, your experiences there. So you like playing Long Island? You feel at home when you're there? You make it sound like I was in prison or something. I spent some time on Long Island. Yes, I spent time on Long Island. And, uh, and Jimmy the Weasel and I were, we were, we were there when we did our time. <clears throat> uh, I went to Garden City High School. And it was a, you know, actually, Garden City High School is a performing arts high school, really. Somebody just forgot to name it. You know, but now, it's, now that we have Glee and all the rest of that stuff, Everybody wants to be in one of those, but the school system there was pretty amazing. And so when I got out of school there, I could play three instruments, and I knew how to do a lot of stuff uh, thanks to you know all the media that was there even back in the day. And I graduated in 1970, so uh, yeah, I love I love Long Island. And I, the funny thing is, I used to talk like this, and, and I used to talk like I can't even do it anymore. But I was trying so hard to get into the television and radio business that. I, I, I watched uh, Anchorman, and I tried to emulate them. So Chuck Scarborough was one of the guys that, uh, that, I, that I emulated on, on News 4 in New York. Uh, I, I started with Cronkite, which was really terrible because I was, I was like, and now I'm going to play. So if you're, tr if you're trying to learn how to be an Anchorman, probably not Cronkite. Yeah, but, I mean, but the storytelling was always so great, and I know that he wrote a lot of his own things. Yeah, yeah, the, the Cronk, as we refer to him, uh, and also David Brinkley. I mean, they had those real, you know, this is David Brinkley, tonight, tonight, on the news. Yeah. Now, what was your break? How did you know that you had made it and you were going to have a living at doing this? Uh, it was really, literally a break. I mean, I, I, I went to school to study textile chemistry. And I can still, actually, this is a very nice gabardine. Uh, and thank you, thank you. I don't even know what gabardine is, but I, but I did. I studied, I studied physics and chemistry. And my parents were convinced that I would starve to death if I uh, did music. Probably right. So about halfway through, I needed a, an easy A, so somebody recommended Television Radio 101. And uh, it wasn't an easy A, but I got bit by that bug. So part-time, I was doing some radio on the weekends, commercial radio, uh, campus radio, and then I was the guy that developed the film at WTVD Channel 11 in Durham, North Carolina. Now, back in the day, when Triceratops was ruling the earth, there was you did, there was none of this stuff, right? And and uh, uh, you know you, you weren't shooting on on a flash card. It was you had to develop the film in the newsroom, and then you, you shot it on film, and then you, that's how you put the news on the air it was on projectors. So my job was to develop the film. And one night, the guy who was anchoring the news who shall remain nameless on Channel Eleven came in drunk. I was the only guy under seventy five years old in the building, so I, I became the anchor man. And uh, so at 19 years old, and still going to North Carolina State, I was anchoring the news, and I, was, I also had a job bussing tables at the local deli. So it was really cool because I would bust tables in the afternoon right before I went to anchor the news. People go, aren't you the, no, it's not possible that the bus boy could be right. So that was really my break, was I was just, that was the only guy I left. That's an adorable story, yeah. you know? Deli by day, newsman by night. That's gonna be the name of my new book, Deli by day, I like that. So okay, it's by Donna Drake, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very, very funny. Um, and so take us forward to today, 2014, because you're here for an a important reason. Right. That's a really big jump. Yeah. Okay, no, well, we no, could no, fill no, in. Okay. We, <laughs> we could go back. No, it's fine. It's, in fact, the rest of it's boring anyway. So. No, 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 it's not. No, it is. It is. Uh, I worked for entertainment. Till I, <laughs> I did a bunch of local news stuff. Then I worked, then I lived in Europe, and I covered downhill ski racing and kite ski flying. Uh, and, then I, and then the guys at Entertainment Tonight called me up and said, 
hey, listen, we want a newsier approach to our new stuff with Mary Hart. I want you to come in and audition. Uh, so I did, and I got the gig. I didn't even know what it was at the time. I, I quit that job in 1996 to, to do music. I wanted to get back into the radio business. So I started a show called Intelligence for Your Life, which is basically little tidbits, you know, uh, how to shrink your waistline in five, uh, in, in five steps, uh, three ways to be a better parent, how to find your purpose in life and all that. And we started syndicating at the radio stations and it was basically the Mickey Rooney thing of, I've got a microphone and an idea, what do you think? And it's very similar to what we're doing today at NAPI where one station at a time, talking to general managers and saying, here's how we can be different for your station. And a lot of them are getting it because for 12 years, we've been doing this show and now we have like eight or nine million people a week that listen to the radio show. So we thought, okay, let's take that concept of these tidbits, illustrate it, figure it out. And then I, there was two warm bodies in my house, including myself. One was my wife, Connie, who's an actress, uh, and my son, Gib, who's, who's in Groundlings and who's a theoretical mathematics major. And I said, let's do a show. And so we started sending it out to general managers saying, what do you think? And they're like, wow, we think we've got something here. And that's really where it happened. It's a, it's a very different show, but I think it's a show for these times right, right here at Nappy where you're able to take each piece and share it electronically as well. I said electronically. Um, as well as it being a half hour you know, terrestrial broadcast show. Yeah, and I agree. When I started Live It Up, one of the purposes was to help people inspire them and live an empowered life. Right. And I think there needs to be more good news. Yeah. And the one thing that I love about your radio show is that when I'm listening to it, I feel good after I listen to it. And I think that purposeful type of creation is much better than just regurgitating all the bad news that's in the world. You, you know, one of my favorite books, it's by a guy named Rick Warren, and it's only it's only been translated into 25 different uh, languages and 80 million in sales. It's called Purpose Driven Life. And it's about that. It's Because you know, when you figure out what your purpose is and then you act on that and then you imprint it on your subconscious mind and you live that, it changes everything, you know? And, and so people are like, they ask me a lot of times, you know, why did you leave a seven figure job in entertainment tonight to pursue your music? It was, I, I felt like my purpose was to create music. And, and I was vilified for that by many talk show hosts. But you know, a, after we went out there and did it and, and you know, and sold our record company uh, and then moved on to the next thing. It was, it was like, there are many purposes that you can have in your, in your life. And uh, as long as it's got that, people will want to come along and be part of it, I believe. So I'm saying the same thing you did more eloquently. I like it. Good job. Eloquently. I'm living it up, basically, here on the Live It Up broadcast. <laughs> You're so I cute. I you live it up, too. You're watching Live It Up. My name is John Tesh, and I want you to live it up every day with the Live It Up program. Because if you don't live it up, I mean, what, what is life if you're not living it up? Do, do you have a t-shirt? Because I can wear that, too. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. And, and we're with uh, Red Touch Media today. Oh, I'm sorry. Nice Red day. Touch Media is providing, is providing these uh, facilities. Did you have fun? I'm still having fun. Are we done? Good. No, I don't think so. You want to dance? No, but I can rap. All right. Would you like me to rap? Would you like me to rap? Which camera should I rap into? This one here? Should I rap? Yes? This is not the Intelligence for Your Life show. Yo, my name is John, and I've got a teenager, and she's at that age when boys want to date her. And though I realize this will eventually occur, I picked up a few things so I can protect her, like mace and pepper spray and night vision goggles and a lie detector and two guys from Chicago. I've been driven to this by the thought of her dating, and the next step is enhanced interrogating. <laughs> Yeah, my kid's 16, why don't you pray for me? What used to be X is now PG. Victoria has a secret and it's just what we feared. Remember when the worst thing was a catalog from Sears? And what am I gonna do when her date's at my door? Driving a Mustang with four on the floor. Oh, hey, come on in, nice to meet you, Frazier. Hang on a second while I get my taser. Thank you. Ta -da, ta -da. I want to hear more of that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's Live, it Live it up. Live it up. Live it up, yeah.